to honor you, Lord, with all I have, Lord, with all I have, I worship you. Give you praise. I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. Let it be only you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto Jesus and be seated in heavenly places. Numbers chapter 23, verse 1. The title of my message today is Altars of Spiritual Life. Altars. Altars of Spiritual Life. Amen. I promise you I'll be teaching on altars. Amen. So. Altars. Altar is spelled A L T A R. Not A L T E R. A L T E R is to change. When you build an altar of God, it will alter your life. Amen. An altar of God is to alter demonic occurrences. Amen. Every Christian. Every spiritual person must have these altars I'm coming to preach. There are seven of them. There are seven altars. The most common one we always talk about is what we call prayer. Prayer is the commonest altar every Christian knows. When they say build an altar, all you think about is uh, prayer. I get it. But an altar is a transport system where divinity meets humanity. It's a transport system. 
so when you have an altar in your life it becomes a channel through which God meets you I get to me an altar is actually a gateway into the spiritual realm God does not visit earth or does not do anything on the earth without an altar amen numbers chapter 23 verse 1 Now, there is Balaam and there is Balak. When Balak was afraid of the children of Israel and wanted to destroy them, he went for a spiritualist, someone who understood spiritual matters. And when this guy came, his name is Balaam. Balak was the king and Balaam was the priest or the prophet. He understood the ways of God. So when he came, the first thing he did in Numbers chapter 23 verse 1 is that he told Balak, Let's read verse 1. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. So now, the altars were to fight the children of Israel. Are you here? The altars were to what? An altar is a defense system. Say, an altar is a defense system. And I'll be teaching you what each of the altar does to defend you prayer is one prayer is a major altar but then what you don't know is that prayer also keeps you burning spiritually but there are other altars and what they do it will amaze you I hear so the Old Testament is full of examples of altars in Genesis chapter 12 we see Abraham building an altar before God Noah built an altar before God in fact in the Old Testament what makes Abraham called to be called what what makes people call god the god of abraham isaac and jacob was that of all these three people each of them built an altar so anybody who has an altar becomes the person of god so where there is no altar and an altar is a fixed system you see it's just that this one is mobile but in the old testament when you see an altar it is fixed it cannot be moved so when you say you are building an altar it means it is fixed it's something you do continuously it is a covenant it's not something you can change or just move about you know if it is prayer every day you are praying are you here but i won't talk about prayer now prayer will be like the last one or i even forget because you know prayer already amen it is a fixed structure so when you go there the fix is like stones fixed it does not move so immediately your activity in the spiritual realm can be changed then it is no longer an altar it is just an activity any activity that is subject to change as a christian is not an altar an altar is something that cannot be changed so if it is 12 o'clock you pray then that 12 o'clock becomes your altar if it is four o'clock immediately today you pray 12 tomorrow you pray one next day you pray three o'clock you don't have a fixed time it is not an altar it is just an activity and that also has its power i get to me yeah but an altar is an is a fixed something or maybe you pray two hours every day or one hour every day it is an altar you are building before god i get to me so the first thing he did is that build me seven altars and you see the reason why he said build me seven altars is because the children of israel had seven different things that kept them going and immediately one of them is attacked that is it holiness is not part of the altar holiness is part of you so it's not an altar the life you live is different from the activity you do an activity is different from your life an activity is part of the things you do daily so holiness is the life you lived altars are the things you build spiritually are you there so there are certain kingdom activities that are called altars in your spiritual life number one fellowship with the word of god 
it is an altar and it must be done daily say daily you see the altar of the word of God what it does is to fight deception if you don't have an altar of the word of God where daily you come before the word of God and read and understand the word of God you'll be deceived many are they who have been deceived because they did not build any altar of the word of God Psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the reason why he says a light a lamp unto my feet because lamp do not shine their light so far a lamp can only shine its light around is that man in church but a light you know from here you can see the street light although they've not fixed correct ones but you can see the street light afar off isn't it so light is for long journey lamp is for short term so the word of god is not only for immediate result it's also for future results so as you are building an altar of the word of god coming daily before the word of god fellowshipping with the word what you are building is a system where deception is taken away from you how do you know the devil is deceiving how do you know the dream you are having is from god it is the altar of the word of god that will show you that this thing i have done is from god or not matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 8 the bible says that jesus was tempered of the devil and every time the devil will come what did jesus say it is written it is written the devil can tempt and will tempt all of you you will have dreams that will be so real you think it's god it is the word of god you see some of you don't know that fellowshipping with the word of god every day delivers you from deception are you here i can come right now and tell pinocchio you know god says god says the bible says god helps those who help themselves we have been coming to church nothing is happening let us help ourselves and i will go and see a spiritualist who may put cross on his altar and then he will give us certain things to put on ourselves and in the next one they will see pinocchio he's driving a car he's having lots of money he has money but what we don't know is that 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 source is wrong and there are some of you you don't know that the thing you are doing is wrong because you don't have any altar of the word of god quick money you don't like what i'm saying eh? an altar of the word of god will teach you how to live your life even how to dress is in the bible can i show you you see being a christian does not mean when you dress it should not look nice although they say you know you should dress to to show the glory of god it's not only for glory it's also for beauty should i show you exodus chapter 28 verse 2 someone should read if i read you think i'm interpreting every christian must learn how to dress one for glory and for beauty you are not hearing me it looks like today you are you are you are not here so let me hurry up so that i can excuse you exodus 28 verse 3 your dressing must do the two things as a christian one it must bring glory to god and number two it must be for beauty this is the old testament and they were dressing as priests look at what god said exodus chapter 28 verse 2 uh-huh. and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron. thou shalt make holy garments so now number one the garment must be holy <coughs> for thy brother for glory and for beauty for glory and for beauty the priest was to dress for glory and for beauty in the new testament he says we are all a royal priesthood so it means that the way the priest used to dress the purpose was for glory and for beauty so you can still dress glorified and still look beautiful tell anybody you can still dress glorified and still look beautiful you see the, the ladies are not saying i don't know why the ladies are not saying why, why are we not saying they are soaking the message hallelujah so it fights deception there is a lot of deception now and let me tell you this on authority the best and safest of truth to believe is not what you see on the internet what you believe is what your pastor tells you i get to me do you know why i'm saying this because you can come to a place where people are saying a whole lot of things 
and you believe what people are saying rather than what your man of God is saying. That is why God will give you a pastor according to his heart to feed you. So there must be a place where you come to where even as a church we protect our church members from deception. That is why we feed you with the word of God. If not, you get to a place where everything anybody will say, you believe. Are you getting me? You believe everything. You, uh, the way they will talk. You know, some people when they are preaching and they are talking, the way they will talk, you even think you are in hell. Who has met such people before? The way they will talk. You, you, you know, as you are walking by the street and the way they will give you pictures, and as you are walking, you'll be saying, God, God, let me just, let me just kill myself and go to heaven. <laughs> So, the altar of the word of God fights deception. Deception is in the system. So, when you build an altar, every morning is a fixed something. Not, not today you read the Bible, tomorrow you don't read the Bible. Every day, you come before the word of God. Not come before my messages. So come before the word of God. Personally, you read the Bible. Personally, you take the Bible. You open to the book of Matthew. Read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. To fight deception. That is what the altar of the word of God does. If not, you'll be deceived. Because the Bible says that. That, that old serpent, that deceives the whole world. Do you know why he can deceive the whole world? Because the whole world does not have the tool to expose him. Paul said, we are not ignorant of his devices. The moment you have that altar built, when the devil is deceiving, you know. Most of you are being deceived. Because there is a way I can twist the scripture. Oh, I, I didn't tell you that. There was a pastor who went to a lady and the lady was believing God for a child. And the pastor said, the Holy Ghost came upon Mary and overshadowed Mary. So it was the Holy Ghost that slept with Mary. And Mary produced Jesus. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Once I overshadow you, something will enter you. Oh, you didn't see that video? And as he was on the lady, he said, power, then the lady will shout, enter. Power and then the lady will shout enter. When I say power, you say enter. Power. Power. <laughs> yeah. That was how that lady was deceived and went back home and told the husband that I am pregnant and the Holy Spirit has given me a child. The kind of dirty slap you receive has not yet been orchestrated in the spirit <laughs> so there is deception i can come to you right now and tell you that so a seed of two thousand cities and god will do this that's why i always tell you that whatever a man of god tells you ask him for scriptures to back it the altar of the word of god some one what some uh some 119 verse um, 9 to 11 he says where with that shall a young man keep himself pure by taking heed to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Psalm 107 verse 20, he says that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges. So piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended not. John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is your defense system. Every time the devil come, you have to tell him it is written. When he tells you that you, you will die, this sickness will kill you, tell him that the Bible says that I will live and not die to declare the good works of the Lord. When he says you are a failure, tell him Deuteronomy 28 says, I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the first and not the last. Tell him Psalm 91. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but they shall not come near you. Tell him John chapter 4 verse 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You see, when you have the word flowing in you and the devil is fighting against you, he is using your past sins to fight against you because of this thing you did, because of the abortion you did, because of the lies you told, because of the fornication you did. That is why things are not moving on. And that deception comes at you. Remember Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 33. It is of the lost mercy that we are not consumed. 
because his compassion they fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness Micah chapter 7 verse 18 who is a God like unto thee that partners iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his everything he, deli- he retaineth not his anger forever because he delights in mercy 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 if you confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the devil can bring your past to torment you but you must build you see so some of you you are thinking that you are suffering for what you did in the past in christianity karma does not work the mercy of god is stronger than karma look at all the people paul killed he should have been killed you should have been what can i continue you still don't want to accept what i'm saying there are times the devil will come and then he will use things from the past images hey! images he will show you videos videos of the things you've done and how they are affecting you now <laughs> he will tell you that this lie you told and this thing you did that is why you are not having money today so now some of you come and say god i'm sorry you have said sorry listen in the sight of god he does not hear your sorry twice in the sight of god he does not hear your sorry how many times twice he hears it only once can i show you a scripture for those who feel their past is catching up with them when you come before god he does not look at your past god does not deal with you according to your past he deals with you according to your future the devil will always deal with you according to your past you see we serve a god who knows your sins eh? but still tells you your future but with there's a devil who doesn't know your future but reminds you of your past is someone in church let me show you Isaiah 44 verse 22 someone should read for me I want you to read it yourself so that you understand what I'm saying Austin they will bring your past the devil will bring your past say you you are singing do you remember what you did to one two three four hey. Isaiah 44 22 I have bloated out as a thick cloud. I have bloated out as a thick cloud. Thy transgressions and as a cloud, thy sins. Listen, he says, no matter how thick your sins are, like the thick cloud, I have bloated it out. I have cancelled it. I have taken it away. I have wiped it away. Return unto me. Return for, unto me. For I have redeemed. I have thee. redeemed you. Why are you running away from God? So that thing stops you from coming to church. It's like the man who said, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't take a shower because I'll, my, my, I'm so dirty that I'll make the bathroom dirty. That is how most of you are. I can't come and bath because my body is so dirty, I'll make the bathroom dirty. The purpose of the bathroom is not to keep the bathroom clean. It's to clean you from your death. The purpose of God and the blood and the church is to cleanse you. Why are you running away from your cleansing agent? The thing that is to keep you pure is what you are running away from. So some people say, I can't come to church because I want to deal with some one or two things. No, it is the church that you deal with one or two things. The church is not, is not a museum for the righteous. It is a hospital for sinners, for people who are broken. Anybody you see in the church is broken. Turn to the next hospital client by you. <laughs> <laughs> listen there is not one single person here who does not need Dr. Jesus <laughs> we are all patients when you come to the church we are all patients and there is only one doctor his name is Jesus alright let me give you the next one our time is fast spent There is a song I wrote uh, the Holy Spirit gave me some time ago. I don't know if I've shared it with Peter. 
I'm amazed at how you love me Captivate and can't even resist What did I do For you to love me so What did I give For you to die for me The least I can do Are you there? The next, the next altar you must build. So we have established that the word of God is an altar. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why is he laughing? You want to say that so <laughs> thank you. You're laughing at my voice. Don't worry. I don't have a good voice, I know. The next altar you must build as a child of God is fellowshipping with other believers. It's an altar. You see, what this altar does is to deliver you from loneliness. You may not know, but when you don't fellowship with other believers, you can easily be attacked. There is something, you see, you can read your Bible, you can, you can study the Bible, but if you don't fellowship with other believers, it will kill your fire. Are you here? We've gone home. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 24. Hebrews 10, verse 24. Uh-huh. And let us consider one another. Let us consider one another. To provoke unto love. To provoke to unto love. Are you seeing it? So now, when we come to church, I'm to consider Petula. I'm to consider William. You are to consider your neighbor sitting by. Do you know what that happens? It provokes unto love. It builds a love mechanism so one of the ways you build your love for god and for other human beings is by coming to church there is something that coming to church will do eh, that speaking in tongues prayer will never do are you here please read on not forsaking the assembling not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. together As the manner of some is. As the manner of some is. Some people don't like, you see, some people say, me, I don't like going to church because now the church, when you go, people are some way. The pastors are some way. The prophets are some way. You go, you pay consultation fee. You pay, uh, what other fee is there? Admission fee. (laughs) You buy oil. You buy palm oil. You buy zomi. You buy all these things. You buy pure water. Someone will go and Pray over pure water, 20 pesos, and pray, come and sell it for you for 2,000 CDs. <laughs> Who sent you there? <laughs> Who sent you there? You were looking for miracles and you went there. Is it like, listen, not that we don't know the correct church. We know, power, we know the correct churches. Nobody here will tell me he doesn't know what a, it is your desire and lust for miracles that will send you to false prophets. Everybody knows what a tell me if you are to name correct churches right now after you get your miracle, you go to a correct church, you know the definition of a correct church, but you go to a place and go and buy things that will produce miracles. And when it fails, you say, Oh, Pastor, it is not all pastor, you are some way. You are some way. <laughs> you know, you know the places they sell oil, and you know the places they don't sell oil. You know the filler, they don't sell oil. But you bypass the filler. You went and they duped you now and you come back to Reverend Mark and tell Reverend Mark that, can you believe what this pastor did to you? You are still telling me. No, you've forgotten I'm a pastor. <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's like, no, how will you feel? How will you feel? Eh? Are, are, you, are you here? If you sell clothes and you have a family member and the family member goes to a boutique and he goes and he goes to buy some worse type of clothes and comes back and is complaining can you believe i want to buy clothes and the clothes was messed up they didn't even treat me well can you imagine the thing is torn 
and the clothes he went to buy. You have been advocating the same clothes on your status. Oh, my friend, this is my clothes. Oh, and family member bypassed you and came back and is complaining to you about clothes he went to buy, which is fake. If it was you, what would you do? Kingdom beaters. <laughs> So you know the right thing. So fellowship with church, you see, your excuse for not coming to church eh, is not an excuse. It's an escape route to do what is right. You are afraid of commit. Most people who give excuse for not coming to church is just a nice way not to be committed. Oh, I want to, uh, I'm busy. I'm washing my clothes. I'm doing this. I'm the same person. Let there be a visa appointment at 9 a.m. The same time, you go there at 5 and you go there today and they say oh it has been postponed to next week next week you go again oh it has been postponed you will not complain that i went today they disappointed me and they didn't come on time why would they disappoint me you come to church one day service didn't start and we came to church today early and then they didn't start early they didn't close early reverend preached for a long time the truth of the matter is that you don't value church and you don't value god it's as simple as that Anything you value, you place a high demand on it. So you notice that most of us don't value church. We only see church as a tool for social club. When I'm going to get married, I need a church. When my family member dies, I need a church. Some people even join church in their old age so that when they die, they will get a place to be buried. So the church is now an investment club. Listen, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17 and 18 says, But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. A church is a Zion, it's a mountain where you come and possess your possession. You cannot listen. I wish I would show you more scriptures. If there is no church in your life, there is no mountain in your life. Because the Bible says in the last days. The mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above other mountains. And we know there are seven other, there are seven mountains. In the last days, all other spheres of life will collapse. The only thing that will be high and exalted is the church. That is why they will fight the church. You watch and see. What is giving hope to people in the midst of the corona? It's a church. It's in Malachi chapter 2. He says that, is it Malachi chapter 2? He says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, and many nations shall come and say that, let us go so that we'll learn the ways of God. Are you here? Okay, let me show you another one. Zechariah chapter 3. There is power in your name. Miracle happen in your name. As we lift our voices, it's you that I see. Let's go to chapter 14. Zachariah chapter 14, verse 17. Is you that I seek? Is you that I see? You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. Zachariah chapter 14, verse 17. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 17 uh -huh. and it shall be it shall be listen oh, this church read for me and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto uh -huh. Jerusalem uh -huh. to worship the king the lord of hosts if you will not come to Jerusalem to worship the king of kings this is what will happen to you in the last days this is what is going to happen even upon them shall be no rain upon them 
shall be no rain. It means a time is coming that the only place you can assess the reign of the spirit is in the church. Someone will say, but, but what, what are you saying? But Jerusalem is... No, listen. Oh, Hebrews chapter 12. Let me show you that in the New Testament, the New Jerusalem is the church. Read from verse 20 or 21. Why else will you get nice music that will suit your soul? Listen, when you are going to pray to your God, why don't you play your shatawali? I know my love. Father, in the name Masukete Masova, I come before you. Then I know my level. There you are. <laughs> play, play and pray. <laughs> you, you, you will look for you, uh, you. What's the name of that song? The, one of the people saw the that we, the people play a uh, some pump, some say <laughs> some put <laughs> play and be praying alongside. <laughs> when it is time to pray, what do what will you look for? You look for a a psalm. Give me all in my, that's what you be <laughs> read for me, please. Hebrews 12, verse 21. That was okay. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Okay, but ye are come unto you Mount are come Zion. unto what Mount Zion. Remember, in upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. So he says, when you come to church, you have come to Mount, that Mount Zion that was prophesied in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. That upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. So the only place mandated for your deliverance is a church. And unto the city of the living God. And unto the city of the living God. Listen to what he says now. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. When you come to church, eh, this is what you've come to. You've come to Mount Zion. You've come to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city of peace. The only place you can get peace is not in your bedroom. Guys, it's not between the ties of a lady. If you want to enjoy ties, go and buy chicken ties from KFC. Am I talking to human beings? Who are, are you here? You don't like messages. Do you know why you don't like? Because one, one, one. Hey, you, you're, you're saying uh, it is beyond, it is beyond. I don't want to say it's beyond the blood of Jesus. But it is beyond, beyond. So immediately they mention something like that. Hey, how can he be talking like that? Who does he think? You to who do you think you are? <laughs> Build an altar. I'm teaching you altars. You are there asking me who, who do I? Are you? Are you? <laughs> Fridge. <laughs> and to an innumerable company of and, angels. And to an innumerable company of angels. There are so many angels here. Can you imagine that? The, listen, when we started singing and I was singing a song, do you notice that at a point in the song, the atmosphere changed? Because immediately an angel was released. There are so many angels here that if God should open your eyes, the number of angels here are more than the people here. There are so many angels here. And he, it's not only angels. He says that to the spirit of just men made perfect. So you have the spirit of Abraham here. You have the spirit of Daniel also here. The spirit of Elijah is also here. The spirit of Hannah is here. The spirit of Samson is here. The spirit of Solomon is here. Pasolo. All these people are here. And Jesus himself, the mediator of the new covenant, is also here before the Holy Spirit you cannot get this presence in your house the altar of fellowshipping with the word of God is in your house alone but the altar of fellowshipping with other believers and coming to church is in the church because this is where you are revived church service is a revival service where you receive fuel for the coming week where you are revived for the coming days in the Old Testament Every Sabbath, all children of Israel were to gather. They had once a week or once a, a month, the day that they were all fast. And the Bible says that three times a year, all males were together. That's why we have convention three times a year. <laughs> we don't do things because we want to do them. We do it because the word of God says so. 
Are you getting me? It's in the church that you are taught the principles and the foundations of, the, of, of, of believing. It's in the church that you are taught how to pray. It's in the church that you are taught how to even give. It's in the church that you are taught how to... Where, where else can you learn the, the spiritual things of life apart from church? You don't want to come to church. If even this one, coming to church is a problem, then the next one there, you have a, a bigger problem with it. Because if even coming to church is a problem for you, it must be an altar in your life that every Sunday I'm in church. Listen, the Jews had that. It was, it was a strong altar. It was so serious that on Sabbath day, manna did not fall for anybody. Go and read, go and read the Bible in Exodus chapter 17, 18, 19, 20. When God rained down Sabbath, uh, uh, manna for them. He said, gather the manna for six days. But on the sixth day, gather twice what you eat. So that on the seventh day, nobody will go out to gather. And people went out on the seventh day and they didn't get any manna. Because God himself respected the seventh day. It was a holy convocation. Every society in this world, every society in this world, meets from time to time. To discuss it. you, you don't want to meet. It's just a oh, eh, hey, me here off. Your friend and Paul. I can't even sit anywhere I want to sit. If there is no place where your pride can be cut off, I dare you, you are a danger about to explode. There must be a place where your humility, your humility must be tested. And the purpose for which coming to church is important is because you need a place where we can account for your life. The next altar you must build, which is similar to coming to church, eh? I hear it's kingdom service, making available your gifts and your gifting to the things of God. You have you saw the choir coming to sing. Not all of them have a Celine Dion type of voice. They have kingdom voices. That is why they are called Shakina voices. We sing to the glory of God. The Bible says, "Make a joyful noise unto the." He didn't say make an. Uh, uh, Melodious, but it's just a joy. Once you are joyful and you are singing, we are happy. There are people when they sing, we cannot discover their key on the keyboard. It is still a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> are you in church? Ask your neighbor, are you part of those people? <laughs> Some people when they sing, we have to use two, two keyboards. Then we'll mix it together before we get their sound. I hear make kingdom services very important. Go and read Matthew chapter 25. The Bible says that there was a man, he was going on a journey and he gave unto one, unto some, he gave unto one of his servants one talent, unto another five, another ten. When he came back, the one who had ten had gone to trade with the, the ten and gain ten more. The one with the five went to trade and gain five more. The one with the one went to hide his talent. Ladies, you are beautiful. Say, lady, say, I'm beautiful. Don't say the T, say, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Do you know that this is your beauty you carry in the world can be used to slay men and in the church can be used to gain souls? What are you using your beauty for? Do you know one day God will ask you of this, your beauty He gave you? That they be all the tra- tra- posts on Instagram, ne? Facebook. Hey, take Peter. Ah, beauty on flick. CC ah, beauty. Ah, nyanko pon she da bore me. Na why na nyanko pon she da bon? What I try to say? <laughs> what kind of demeaning attitude is that? Look at your neighbor and say nyanko pon she da bore. God, God, God intentionally created you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. God intentionally created you. But he created you for his good works. Why your good works? <laughs> you come to church, do something in the house of God. If even Sunday is a busy day, you can do something for just that two hours we are got. One, you, don't, you even have a problem with coming to church. 
the nine o'clock you don't come at nine you come at 9 15 9 30 when we are going to close then you come there are people who come at 10 30 and they expect the church to close at 11. the only day you set aside to worship god you come to you don't do anything for god matthew chapter 9 let me show you something there was a man whose servant was sick and about to die I hope it's Matthew chapter 9. Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 7 rather. There was a guy who was, whose servant, his servant, not he himself. And he was coming to Jesus. And the elders of the Jews came to Jesus. Luke chapter 7. Read verse 2. Look at, look at what they said. My time is almost up, so I have to hurry. Look, look chapter 7, verse 2. Uh-huh. And a certain centurion servant. A certain centurion. And if you know ancient history, you know that centurion is not Jewish. Centurions are Romans. Because centurion is a leader. I get him. He's a soldier. His servant was sick. And I believe the servant was Jew. That's why he came to the Jews. When you are sick and you are dying, we will always trace your source. So if you don't have a source, we cannot trace you when you are we will not have anybody to help you. When you are dying today and you have church, they will come to the church. If you are dying and you don't have church, who will they go to? Who is your pastor? If you don't point me, wait. <laughs> Let's describe who a pastor is first in your life. <laughs> There must be somebody in your life that when issues are going on, somebody can always say, I know his pastor. I know her pastor. They don't know anything. You, 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 you. Facebook family. <clears throat> Continue. And I said to Centurion servant, who was dear unto him, was sick. Yeah. Ready to die. Ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, uh-huh. He sent unto him the elders of the Jews, wow. beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Beseeching him that he would come and remember, Jews have no dealings with Romans or other. Remember, it was the same Jews and other people's problem that Jesus told someone that uh, he, uh, 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 we don't give whatever, we don't cast spells before swine, and the woman had to say that even the dogs eat of the tables of the crumbs of the table. And then this same unbeliever or gentile comes to Jesus. He himself doesn't even come and says the other elders of the Jews. But look at Jesus' response. Read for me. And when they came to Jesus, uh-huh. they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he, he was should. worthy for whom he should do this. He should do this. For he loved our nation. Because he loved our nation. He was a Roman, but he loved the church. Not only did he love the church, but the next thing is that he did what? And he had built us a synagogue. He has built us a synagogue. That means that he was engaged in kingdom building. He sacrificed his all to build the church. And look at what happens to Jesus. When he's, immediately he said that, Jesus does not even reply. The then, next thing is that he turned. Then Jesus went with them. And Jesus went with them. No discussion. There is a realm of kingdom service that when you enter into, God does not have to do any discussion with you. He just answers your prayers speedily. I want to ask you a question. On what altar will God visit you with prosperity? What have you done for the kingdom of God that angels can look down and say that, angel, God, God, Richard has been faithful and has been doing this. So bless Richard with this. If you read Exodus chapter 1 and chapter 2, the Bible says that the midwives, they did not kill the, the male bones. And because they feared God, God built them a house. It was not a physical house. It was a spiritual house. When you build God's church, God will build your life. When you invest in God's kingdom, God will invest in your life. What, what is your talent? What is your gift? You've gone to hide it. You can sing and you are sitting down. Choir is singing. You are, you are monitoring who is singing treble, who is singing tenor, who is singing. Uh, okay, it looks like the guys. The guys are the, That's why they are not holding microphone. Their voice, it doesn't match tenor. Emmanuel Perkins and Richard. It looks like kingdom voices. 
make your gift listen some of you you can use internet very well oh put one picture that the whole world is crazy any activity you do to promote kingdom is a kingdom service any activity any activity you don't even share anything about God on your state of you dear four more to do more or four more to steal more if you, it's, it is not <laughs> hey, I tell you, politics. <laughs> Someone said four more to do more. Another person shouted, four more to steal more. I Me, mean, I don't know what it is. I Me, mean, I'm not into politics. So we thank God. But I can, you know, it's to do more. But you people know the other one. <laughs> So make available your gift and your talent. You have a desire for instruments. Play. You see, this gentleman here didn't have a thing about what they are doing. Someone standing before. It was originally where, where is Perkins? Uh-huh. You see, he started now. He's sitting at the back there. You see, this one shooting the video is Augustine. It so you can there is nothing you cannot do. I get him. There is nothing you cannot do. In the house of God, everything is possible. You can even join the prayer force that we are leading prayer because the prayer person he's tired. <laughs> How many is there? He knows this. <laughs> oh. You can even come and sweep the house of God. Friday after church, two gentlemen walk up to me and say they want to just paint the place. I said, Why not? Go ahead. <laughs> and as you have made the house of God beautiful. God will forever make your life beautiful. Yeah. It's a principle. Whatever you invest into the house of God, God invests into your life. That is, you see, that is one of the altars God looks upon to bless you. It's true. The altar of fellowshipping with the word of God fights deception. The altar of coming to church fights what? Coldness and lukewarmness but the altar of service to the kingdom of God fights uh, other things from feasting on your life so as they have come they've paint, they thought they were just painting but God said ah you have made this place beautiful I'm going to build your life as they are taking their pictures God is also taking note of their account you see there is a book in heaven there are books when the books are open they will mention your name they will mention your name. They say, Pinocchio, come. Let us open the book. Let's open the book of prayer. Every day, Pinocchio wake up, people pray, Panabos, Priyaba, Papa. God will say, 100%. Let's open the books of coming to church. Oh, he's always there. Palada, Palada, 10 over 10. Book of kingdom service. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> God, you let's give him four. <laughs> Kingdom service. Blessed are they that die in the Lord. And their works. What is following you? Some of you, it is air. Air. That will follow you. There is no excuse. You can't do something in the house of God. There are so many things to do. You can even join the aquaba. If people are coming to church, you know, it's smiling. Enter instead of meeting these hard faces men at the gate. When you are even coming, you know they are thinking about what to eat. So when they if it's, when you even see them, you have given up. <laughs> I hear there is something to do. Someone read news. Uh, he reads uh, announcement. Yeah, just reading of an. You think it's nothing, but it adds a certain whatever to the church. Yeah, you are there. You say, eh, 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 hey, of a kind of announcement. Hey, of a kind of announcement. Uh, uh, I say, uh, 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 I say, uh, I say, 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 I say
That's, that is why you, you are just not moving on, and you don't understand why things are not working. Because you, 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 you are you are more than CNN. You are more than BBC put together. You will criticize everything. You will criticize. Next altar. Next altar. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, tell me some. Are you blessed? The next altar you must build is the altar of evangelism. <laughs> Where is your altar of evangelism? There is no crown for you in heaven. If you don't have any altar of evangelism, that God can look and say, because you have won souls. The, listen, there is something so winning does that prayer will never do. It's true. There's something so winning will forever do that. There is no amount of prayer you pray that will do it. And there is something that prayer will do that evangelism can never do. And there is something kingdom service will do that no amount of prayer you pray will ever do. Those who are engaged in kingdom service eh, most likely will not have a problem with work. Every time there is work available for them, check and see. God will always favor those who are engaged in kingdom service in the area of work. And if you have been engaged in kingdom service in any way, I stand on that altar and I call forth your career in the name of Jesus. You cannot serve God and God will not make men serve you. There is favor release when you are engaged in kingdom service. As I'm talking, you should be asking yourself, what can I do in the house of God? can I do? The way the praise and worship guy has been leading, it looks like me when I was in school, I used to lead Jama. I can do this praise thing. Because the guy, you know, lead the kakra, and I said, so, wakweme, evangelism. Evangelism. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Uh-huh. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Uh-huh. And he that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth souls is wise. So wisdom, that, that altar of evangelism will produce the fruit of wisdom in your life. There is no evidence of wisdom in your life because you have never won a soul. Nyansa be any hope. The moment you start preaching to others, automatically you become wise because you start you start setting a standard for yourself. Are you here? You start preaching to others and you see that all the things you like it will just vanish away. You are all quiet because all of you are victims. There is no author of evangelism. You don't tell anybody about Jesus Christ. Nothing. You tell people about what a benquine, fufu and a benquine. You tell them about bet. You even you even <laughs> you even give them the the link or the how do they how do they do it? The what? The match. The face chest and how to bet that you, you do what they say what come on, you say some teach me or you teach me. You see, they are pretending. He said, Genia knows. Okay. <laughs> you even teach them that you put this one here, put five here, put two here, put whatever. I don't even know. But <laughs> and then before you realize you have won this, but you've never told anybody that unless a man be born again, he will never see the kingdom of heaven. You've been using your status. For other things, but you've never put your status to talk about Jesus Christ. Do you know that there is someone on your contact eh, who also knows God, but is ashamed to declare God and is waiting for you to also declare God? They will say, Ah, so this guy also is also a God person. Then the person, li- listen, if you like put something on your status, somebody somehow will put a similar thing on his or her status after some few minutes or some hours do you know why because you are an encouragement to many people many people are looking up to you it will shock you that you sitting here 
Many people are waiting for you to just say, ah, Jesus is real. And they also start proclaiming Jesus. You are the door that has been close to many people. You are the door that has been close to me. And on judgment, the God will ask you. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18, he says, if I say unto the, the, the heathen, you shall surely die. And you don't want them. They will surely die, but their blood will I require of your hand. Most of you, your hands are stained with blood. You get to heaven and God will say, you are a metra. And murderers have no place in the kingdom. Hey, I speak by the spirit, not by my mind. If I speak by my mind, I can't say what I'm saying. You are a murderer. You are a murderer. You are a student. You have school friends and they are doing bad things. You can't even say, hey, Jesus is real because you are afraid they will call you Krife. For three years, you are afraid people will call you Krife. That three years of your life, being afraid of people calling you Krife. If they don't call you Krife and they call you other things, can you, can you imagine what kind of harm? Are you aware that you are going to raise armed robbers that will one day come and attack your house? Are you in church? Let me give you. How many do you have? Number one is what? Fellowship with the word. Number two. Right. Number what? Number four. Number five is given. Given. It's an listen. When I say an altar, it's something you do continuously. It is always part of you. Are you getting me? It's part of you. Giving should be part of your life. That there is a certain amount I give to God every week. If it is 50 CDs, it's a it is an amount I give to God every week. And there are you see, one of these is I'll teach you the seven types of giving every Christian must engage in. There are seven of them. We have giving to God, which is offering. We have tithing, another type of giving. <coughs> giving to your man of God. Giving to the poor. Giving to your family. I get him. These are, there are seven giving lifestyles you must have. And every Christian must learn how to give to your man of God. You must learn how to pay your tithe. Give tight. You must learn it. It is a constant thing in your life. That once in a while you take money and say, Man of God, this is just for your fool. You must learn it. Just say, Would you dip your bar? So they know how your man of God names are. No, you two cities. Two cities. I hear wretched. Oh, you should walk in stick. Then you just give it to God. <laughs> once in a while you take money in an name say, Man of God. You see, I've never said this to you before, but today I'm telling you. Because I want you well. You give. And once in a while, you must put money in an envelope. If your parents are still alive, give money to them. And give to the poor. You see people on the street begging for money. Hey, I just read on City TV that people are making money out of this begging thing. It is a school they attend. It is true. And we are not fools to give. It's not like we don't know. But once you come in the name of a poor person, we will give to you and you will remain poor. You don't understand what it means. My giving is, you, are, you come in the name of a man of God. I'll give to you as a man of God. You can fool me as a but You see, the Bible never said, you shall reap where you sow. No, that's not what the Bible says. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. For God is not mocked. It never says, you will reap where you sow. It says, you will reap what you sow. So if I come and sow in the life of Pinocchio, and Pinocchio is even a false man of God. God will not look at Pinocchio to bless or not bless me. He will look at the action of sowing to bless me. Please read it. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Uh -huh. For whatsoever a man soweth. Whatsoever you sow, you reap. Not wherever she, you sow. That shall he. Also. You see, most of you say that, eh, me last time I gave to this person and this person was bad. I won't give to this person again. No. You don't give because of the person. You give because of the activity. Giving should not be based on the ground. It should be based on the produce. You look at the harvest to give. You don't look at the person. Are you in church? You don't reap where you sow. You reap what you sow. So if I give to Pinocchio and Pinocchio counts as a beggar, God will not bless me 
or say because you gave to Pinocchio and Pinocchio was telling lies so my blessing will not come no God will bless me because I gave to a beggar and he will bless me with the results of giving to a beggar which is what give unto the poor and the Lord will repay you he that has given to the poor has lent to God and God will repay him whether the person comes in the name of a beggar and is telling lies God will still repay me you must learn to give to the poor you don't know how to give to the poor your hands are stiff you are suffering from the spirit of leprosy the spirit of leprosy even pastors cannot give church members cannot you've never given hundred cities to God before hundred cities offering time hundred cities is it is it is beyond your imagination people are giving five thousand ten thousand to God you hundred cities you, hey I should give my hundred cities eh? so that they go and use it for what you see to you giving in church means that you are wasting money you can spend 20 cities on food but find five cities difficult to give to God it's a spirit of leprosy yeah the place to give the most is church hey, hey now if I give they are going to spend our money on listen are you the judge of God or are you the God or the judge <laughs> it is God who judges. us are you here you don't like what I'm saying giving Muslims know it they call it what Zaraka or Salaka they know it during their fasting period they go and give Salaka they'll come and dash you things right now they know what it does but you the Christian that God has given you the principles of financial empowerment you are sitting down there he says when you pay your tithes I open the windows of heaven you've not paid your tithes and yet you are complaining my Lord you've not given me money how can I pay my tithes why would God be asking you for tithes if you don't have money the 10 CDs he gave you the other time where was it where, where, where is the tithe out of it you spent it and come back and say God all you give me is 10 CDs he that is faithful in the least will also be faithful in the match God gave you 10 CDs couldn't pay tithes why should he bless you with 100 CDs he blessed you with 100 cities. You couldn't pay that. What is the assurance that you'll be faithful with 1,000? The faces have changed. You see? The financial commitment of Christian is very low. We are, we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we are not committed to our financial lives. When we get money, eh? when we get all of you here, when you get money, let 1,000 cities fall into your hands. Ah! Dresses. The ladies' dresses, hair, bone straight. As if the bone in your skin is already crooked. <laughs> bone straight. All ladies receive bone straight hair in Jesus' name. Oh, you say amen. I'm not, I'm not tricking you. I'm prophesying over your life. Receive bone straight hair in Jesus' name. It will happen. Before the month ends, all of you will have bone straight hair. Those who said amen, they will receive it. Amen. You spend money, guys. You like gadgets. Gadgets. iPad, iPhone, i this, i i. And the, the thing I hate about i i i is that it makes you think about i, which is selfishness. Everybody who has an i is always thinking of themselves. It's always I, 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 I. Are you in church? <laughs> where is the altar of giving in your life? Where, where, what can God look upon in Pinocchio or Austin's life and say that Austin gave this amount of money? So I'll look upon that and bless him. Or look at Mavis and say, Ah, Mavis gave this amount of money. You see, some of you, you can't give to God because you don't value God. You have thousands of this, you can't divide it and say, God, I'm giving you 500. I don't know how I'm going to survive for the next one month, but my salary is only 1,000 and I'm giving you 500. Even the 1,000, you are telling God, God, you know this one is not enough. I'm praying, Lord, increase me. Increase my salary. When you increase my salary, you know my heart. I'll come back and give you more. And God will say that even the little I have given you, you've not trusted me enough with it. Why should I give you more? 
So you see someone who is not going to work and God is blessing and you are jealous of the person. Meanwhile, that person, God gave him 10 cities and was faithful and told God, God, you gave me 10, I'm giving you back the 10. God said, okay, I'm going to bless him with 100 to see how faithful they are. He said, God, you've given me 100, I'm giving you 80. I don't know how I'm going to survive, but I'm going to survive on 20. God said, this is my son, is faithful. He said, okay, I'll give him 1,000 to see. God, you gave me 1,000, I'm giving you 500. I don't know how I'm going to survive on 500, but I'll still survive. Then God said, no, let me give him 2,000. He said, God, you gave me 2,000. I survived on 500 last month, so I'm giving you back 1,500. You don't have that kind of heart for God. That is why God is not blessing you. God is not a man to lie. If he has written in his word that give and it will be given back to you, then it means that there is something you are not doing. Either you are not giving rightly. That is why God is not giving back to you. God well, is not a man to lie. You don't know how to give. You don't know how to give. Two years ago or three years ago, I sold my uh, tablet, Samsung. Is it 12 inches? It was 12 inches. Samsung with a pencil. Yeah. That Sunday, I, I used to take taxi to church. Sunday we came to church. God said, give it to Pastor Sam. I gave it to him. Right here, give it to him. Little did I know that I think two weeks after or so, a week after, that was my birthday. That year I was wearing white and pink. God said, give it to him. I had to use Huawei, Huawei tablet for almost one year. <laughs> the following week I received the car. Yeah. That tablet, when, when, they went, when I went to ask for the price, it was bought then like 20, 2015 or 24, it was bought at 2,500. That was my all because that was what I was using for my studies and my reading and everything. I give it out. You'd be surprised. God is blessing a man of God. He said, eh, he's using church money. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know what goes. There must be somebody or some people in your life that at least once every week you give them 50 CDs or 100 CDs or 20 once every week. It is part. It's a, it's a covenant you have with God. You must have that altar. So that in times of lack, you can call on God and say, remember my days of giving. And God will go back into the account and say, this person has been given. There is no need for her to lack. There are people that when they are in lack, they can tell God, God, if, if, if you don't bless me, how will I bless the people? You know that I'm a giver to your people. If you don't bless me, how will I give? These people are depending on me for survival, for your glory to be, to be above them. So God has to bless them. God must bless them. When giving becomes a problem, abundance is taken away from your life. Even in a church, you can target two or three people that every Sunday you tell yourself that this person, I'm going to buy food for them. Or this person, I'm going. Even your man will say, once every man, I'm going to give this amount of money to my man of God. I may look foolish, but the Bible says, "Believe in the Lord thy God, and thou shalt be established. Believe in His prophet, or honor His prophet, and thou shalt prosper." There is a level of prosperity that will hit you once you begin to honor a man of God. It will shock you. Someone came to my house, was working in my house for two weeks. By the end of the two weeks, he got a job. By the end of two weeks, he got a job. Someone also came to take my car and was washing personally. He was washing my car personally. And he has been chasing his driver's license for two years. That same day, he got it. Saturday, DVLA sent him a message that your driver's license is made. What, what, can, what, what, what giving have you accumulated in the spirit? Because the Bible says when the clouds are full, it will pour out rain. There is no cloud and you are expecting rain. I'm spending my time on giving because I've never spoken about giving in this way before. Some of you, giving is a problem. You have 100 CDs, everything must go. 200 CDs, everything must go. 1,000 CDs, pew. And you say, God, bless me. When you bless me, eh? you see this in your church. I will, ah, ah, what I will do in the church? God will say, now when I even gave you 100 CDs, and the man of God was taking offering and mentioned 50 Ghana. You could not trust me enough to bring 50 Ghana cities to me. What makes you think I can trust you with 1,000 cities? God could not trust you with 100 cities. 
or you could not trust God with your 50 cities and you expect God to trust you with 1,000 cities. Ladies or guys, I want to ask you a question. Guys, you gave 50 cities to a lady to cook rice and stew and guamo with egg and pepper. Just 50 cities. And by the time you came back, the person said that anguamo, the money was not enough. So they didn't cook the anguamo. This same person comes to you again. I say, now I want to cook jollof. Give me 200 cities. What will be your response? <laughs> I gave you 50 Ghana. The anguamo you couldn't do. <laughs> one cup is one cities. <laughs> one or two cities. <laughs> Egg, one city. Sadi and Pepe. You couldn't do. How sure am I that if I give you 200 cities, you can cook your love? You what? They couldn't feel the gas. <laughs> that is how God is watching us. Say, so I gave you 50 Ghana. You are holding 50 Ghana. And I said, You give me 20. The ma- you see, sometimes you think me standing here to say, if you have 50 Ghana, come and give. You think it is just me. You don't know it is God calling you to, uh, uh, as, as a bridge of trust. The money he gave you is calling to see how much you trust him with the money. But you put your money, you are calculating the things you go and buy after church. The expenses you have, the marketplace you will go. It's true. That is why giving has become a problem in the church. Everybody is complaining about giving. Do you know why? Because we see it as a problem. You see it as a problem. Someone can buy someone's CD for 100,000 CDs. And yet when they give 5,000 CDs at a program, uh, church, and they are giving 5,000 CDs. Do you know the amount of money people blow over the weekend over side checks? Do you know the amount of Kempeski, uh, whatever? Is it Kempeski or Kempeski? Kenske, ke, that hotel. People go and buy Garisokis for 150 Ghana cities and they call it Flex. Why can't you also come to church? You remove 1,000 cities as offering. Come and put it at the altar as Flex to God. That God, this is how much I love you. Collect 2,000. You just, as a man of God is preaching, instead of coming to put the money there, you can't say, God, this is for you, Dallas. This for you, fresh notes for you, for you. I empty my pocket and go back and let the whole, whole world know. Listen, listen, showing the world about the money you have is not boasting. No, 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 no. no. You must learn the difference between boasting and confidence. You must let the world know who your God is. People go, we go, people are doing whatever they, you see someone holding dollars. To go miss, to go miss, to go miss, to go miss. They say that they, 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 one are more black that they are there. <laughs> they, they, you see that they are spraying it on them. When are you going to spray to God? He knows how much He has given you. The pastor may not know, but God knows. Give hundred cities body when it's time. Say God, hundred cities is not anything. You wait and see. When you bless me with that ten thousand, I'll give you eight thousand. You just wait and see. You don't know me. I will spoil your church with money. God is looking for such people. What did Solomon tell God? He sacrificed eight thousand animals, and the glory of God descended. There is a level of giving, and when you give, the glory of God will settle on your life. I'm telling you, it's called sacrificial giving. The Bible says that the woman came to give and Jesus said, this woman has given more than everybody because she has given her life. Giving is not the amount, it is the life you give. You are holding five CDs, it's difficult for you to give. You want God to bless you with 500,000. Are you serious at all? Some of you, God has been impressing your heart to sow seeds. You are still sitting down there. Sow a seed. You are, is that your salary? He said, sow a seed. Divide it. Sow a seed into the life of the man of God. He has to say, that. God, God, can we have a meeting? 
you are calling God for a meet. <laughs> you, you see, let me tell you, an instruction from the Lord is to save you from distraction. And when God gives an instruction, it's because he knows your capacity. And your capacity is determined by the investment God has made in you. God knows your capacity. That's why we say, give this one. But God, I don't have anything. My gas is finished. Electricity bill. This and this and this. Oh. Elijah and the woman said, give. Just bring it. I know what I'm doing. The poor widow didn't have anything. So what do you have in your house? Just a morsel of bread and some cruise of oil for me and my child to eat and with that. So bring it. The woman didn't complain. Say, you are very wicked. If it was today, he said that this man of God is wicked. God must test you before he can trust you with his riches. I couldn't even finish the other two. But maybe next year I'll do I'll give you the other two. Maybe next year. <laughs> because it was for today. I don't know what you say. You can't give. You have a problem. You have a spiritual leprosy problem. You have to wait till a me- message like this is preached before you remove 20 Ghana. And even that 20 Ghana crowd, <laughs> one time we came to church <laughs> after the offering. Someone followed the person counting the Was it you? Counting the offering. He said, Please change. <laughs> I gave 50 Ghana. I, I was giving 5 cities. So if you can change, I'll give you 45. <laughs> was it you or it was another person? <laughs> yeah. True story. Ask Lady Martina. Do you remember? The person gave 50 Ghana and followed the people counting the money and said, please, I gave 50 Ghana, but I, there was no change. So if you can change and give me 45 cities. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. Alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Please rise to your feet, let's go. Lord, have your Then these altars. They should help you to be faithful with these altars. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm aware. Lord, have your way between me. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me. Hallelujah. to consider carefully the things I've said let me pray for you father I pray for each and everyone be with them help them to build these altars in their lives in Jesus mighty name amen please be seated hallelujah Take out your offering. Facebook family, take out your offering.
if you are here with your tithes, please. If you are here with your tithe, please come forward. The Facebook life has ended. Why? The connector. All right, please, where is there? 